Welcome back to Allo Geek. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Olympus Vanta Element S. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Vanta Element S. You can see that the, there's a nice case here, pretty standard Pelican case. And inside, I wanna go over this paperwork real quick so you guys understand what this is and why this is important. The first thing you wanna note is that we have a radiation survey. You're gonna need that when you register the instrument with your local government. And then also there's a certificate of calibration. Now a certificate of calibration is gonna tell you what samples were used and what elements were, were read when they did the calibration for this instrument. So if you have any questions or your quality department wants to take a look at that or needs after the file, it's right there. The next thing we wanna do is let's take a look at the Vanta Element S. Now you'll see it was kind of snug in the case there. This foam here is that nice harder foam and actually it's, it's pretty nice. I think it's like an upgrade to me versus the softer foam that tends to get dirty. The analyzer looks good. I love the orange color on this analyzer. Um, the back of the analyzer looks really cool. The screen's nice, big and long, right? So, um, but let's, let's take that, set that aside for a second. Look at some of the other features. We get one battery with the Vanta Element S. You can find more of these batteries on AlloGeek.com. Um, they're pretty easy to come by. I recommend having at least two batteries, if not three to five, if you have a big facility. The battery cover is actually a separate part here, and you'll see it has an arrow. It tells you kind of how to align the battery. So if you look at the arrows on the, on the, the battery and stuff, you can see that they align, and you just put the battery in the base like that, and then that, of course, the arrows would point to the front of the analyzer and clip that in. And once you're, it's kind of like locked and loaded, right? There's a power button over here, a joystick here, and another button over here. So we're gonna hold the power button in for just a second to turn the analyzer on. You hear a little click and then it comes on, but look at how nice and bright the screen is and how long the screen is. I'm a huge fan of this. Um, it's hard to see on the, the screen here, but there are these lips on the outside, along with a recessed screen. That's probably gonna give your screen a little bit of protection in the industry. And Olympus is known to have very durable instruments out there. So Olympus is now evidence scientific, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna call them Olympus because they don't have another option. We have x-ray lights here on the top of the instrument. They kind of, it's like an LED panel that runs all the way around, um, pretty nice. The handle's a little bit big, a little bit bulky, uh, but actually seems to be okay. Um, and then there's a trigger here, which I actually really like the trigger. Now, I haven't logged into the instrument yet, so I'm not gonna do anything. You can hear that click. Um, nice feedback on the trigger. Overall, I think this feels like a nice beefy instrument. Um, feels really good to me. Um, so let's log into this instrument and kind of let it boot up to show you the startup process. Okay, while it's loading, let's look at the front of the nose. Now, you'll just see here is there's a window that actually sticks to the front of the analyzer. I'm a big fan of anal uh, analyzers with windows that stick to the front. Uh, this is actually a Kapton mesh window, and we have more windows here. You're given three replacement windows with your analyzer, so let's, let's take a look at those. So let's pull one out of here. There we are. So you'll see that this window has a Kapton mesh with, if you can see in the light there, you see that little bit of a shine. There is actually that uh, probably a proline backing to this window. So um, great for protection of your handheld XRF. You can see it really clearly there, um, that, that nice gridded mesh window. Very cool. Um, and then you're also given a USB uh, drive, a thumb drive. Now this is like a small one and I'll show you where that goes in just a second. So the analyzer is already powered on and it looks really uh, straightforward. We're in alloy plus mode, as you can see there. But let's take a look at the top of the analyzer before we start with that. This is the hatch, the access hatch. There's no more crappy rubber boot that kind of floats around. What you end up with is like this hatch, you turn this finger screw a couple of times, and open up the hatch and you're ended up with this nice port in the top with a sealed gasket and like a nice piece of plastic that's gonna essentially mate up to that gasket and seal your analyzer shut, seal the ports shut. I think it's a smart design. Um, it looks a little clunky, but in practice it works very well. Um, so then take a look here. That's your power cord. That's where that's gonna go. And I've got the power cord in the other room actually. So we won't show it on this video, but it's a pretty standard power cord. Um, and you can find that as well on allygeek.com. We've got a, an SD card there, a USB port here, and these two USB ports here are for things like uh, this little um, this little thumb drive here, which can go in that, that port. Let me show you that. I'll show you how it goes in there. So there's some cool designs by Olympus to kind of help not only miniaturize the design here, 
Now I'm gonna do this on camera, so I'm sure I'm gonna put it in the wrong way, but you see this little, this little piece here it also helps you remove the, uh, the USB drive once it's in there. But see that goes down flush, so that's really nice. You can also put in a, this is just a storage unit, but you can also put in a USB drive that does Bluetooth and it's another USB drive that does Wi-Fi. So if you want any of those dongles, you, know, you can find those on allegeek.com if your instrument didn't come with one. And of course this hatch would just push shut and you just do a quick twist. No tools necessary to get in there. Um, I actually kind of like this a lot. I wish more companies would do stuff like this because it's uh, it's actually kind of a nice feature. So anyways, the instrument's all powered up and uh, let's take a look at some of the first readings right out of the box. Okay, so first up we have the 6061 sample in the middle. Let's take a look and see how this analyzer does. I pressed the trigger one time. Now keep in mind that the test times in this, in, I've set up the test times for this test. Um, I have not set this up uh, in a way to make this look faster. This is just what I feel is the best test. We're doing both the heavy and the light beam. So if we look here, we've got 6061 aluminum with an exact match. If I want to compare that to a secondary, um, alloy here I just touched the 6061 and it shows me how it compares to 1100 and you can see that there are some grades that even highlights and very nicely tells you hey these elements are out of spec for this alloy it's not a very good match right that's great to see um, that's not something all analyzers highlight very well this analyzer does a great job of doing that you'll also see that we are able to nail things like magnesium and silicon the light elements and the colorful um, chemical analysis window here tells you how close you are in or out of spec. You'll notice things like magnesium that have a little less precision on any handheld XRF analyzer have broader um, error bars on them. The yellow ranges here are bigger than they are for something like zinc or uh, iron, but um, that's just standard par for the course. So now we're gonna run this 304 stainless steel here. I push the trigger one time. Now um, I'm actually gonna stop this test here there's no reason to put the light element filter on um, because we don't really have light elements and you can see that was very quick to get a result or a match. We're at 304 here, right? So let's compare that to, well, first let's talk through the chemistry. So we've got all of the major elements here, including iron, chrome, nickel, manganese, copper, molybdenum. They're all within the range that's acceptable. But let's compare to the secondary match, which is 321 stainless steel. But you'll notice that the nickel is too low here and also, we really don't see the titanium that we need to see in 321. So it is prioritizing the right match and able to match 304 stainless steel really easily. But this long elongated display, um, the way it's bright, uh, I, just, I just think this is a really nice design by Olympus. So as you just saw, the Olympus Vanta Element S is a nice little analyzer and it's uh, really sleek. It's got a lot of nice features to it. I think this analyzer is a really nice workhorse. Olympus is known to have their customer service right here in the USA. You can call someone anytime and, and talk to somebody, which is just really helpful. That's not true for everyone in the marketplace. Um, the second thing I really like about this analyzer is the price point. It's a, it's a slower price point, it's easier entry. Some of the analyzers can get kind of expensive. Um, if you're just starting out or this is your first handheld XRF, this is a pretty good place to start. Now, the other thing about this analyzer that I really like is that the window sticks on the outside. These are the Vanta Element S. They come up, they came up with an in, like a nice design here where you see the uh, the mesh backing on that window. That's actually a really great um, design. To, to have a compromise of both protection for the analyzer itself, the tube and the detector that are inside the, the nose of the unit, and also to make sure you can see those light elements, which we need to see in most of the industry today. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you need more parts for your Vanta Element S, you can find them on allegeek.com. We'll see you guys next time.